Hi everybody. I thought it would be fun to do something a little different, so I'm going to tell you all about my favorite essential oils, the ones that I've been using for years and that I use all the time. And I just made a little coffee. So I'm going to pour my milk just so that we can hang out and spend some time together. Okay, let's do this. Take you around so that I can grab, so I have a couple. I have orange and bergamot on my kitchen table. And then I'm gonna, let's see if I can carry everything with one hand. And then I have a little kind of regular lotion. That's not gonna work. <laughs> I'm carrying this and this together, okay. I can make it to the coffee table, but then I'm gonna have to go back, hold on, and get the other ones that I have near my diffuser. So I have near my diffuser, a little set up here with some oil, oils, and the ones that I'm gonna grab right here. Okay, let's get settled. Okay, so this is, a little, this is a little bit more unstructured than the other videos that I've posted before. I kind of wanted to try something different. So I'm going to have a little sip of my coffee. I hope you made some kind of a drink to join me. I need to remember to look at the camera, not myself. Okay, so I have, I want to tell you today about my favorite five essential oils. The ones that I use all the time that I've been using forever for probably two decades now. Um, the first, so okay, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna give you the lineup. We have wild orange or sweet orange. We have bergamot. We have so two citrus, lavender, got geranium, oh, and we have so two florals and then vetiver which is kind of my equivalent of, actually this bottle's empty, you guys. I don't know if you can see it. It's like almost empty. Um, my equivalent of a wood, I guess. It's a resin, vetiver. No, it's not a resin. What am I talking about? I'm thinking of frankincense. Vetiver is the root of a grass. So it's, it's kind of my wood, you know? It's the equivalent of my wood. Um, it's 9.30, I'm recording this at 9.30, so that's why I'm making coffee. I want to start by wild orange, by talking about orange. Um, and I did bring my lotion. So this is how, if I use things topically, this is how I do it. This is very European. I grew up in Europe, in France, and so we, this is a, you know, we had the, if you're European too, you know, we had the little um, containers and this is how I usually do essential oils if I'm going to put them on my hand. So I just put a little glove and I'm actually going to open your bottle first. That makes it easier. So there's something on my hand and then I'm going to drop just one, one drop. And then this is what I do. Oh, it smells so good. Hmm. So wild orange or sweet orange is one of my favorite oils because it is so fun. It is really fresh. It's really joyful. It just put inst it instantly puts a smile on my face. Um, it's a very optimistic oil. So whenever I feel kind of, you know, this kind of creeping little bluesy mood or whenever you feel kind of low energy, a little, a little bit sluggish and you don't want to have another coffee. <laughs> Wild orange is very fun. So this was on my kitchen table and this is what I use in the morning. I just open it and I smell it. And it's really delicious. It's really delicious. It is, um, when you look into emotional aromatherapy, 
it is an oil that is linked to the inner child within us. It's this idea of being carefree, of being just like a childish energy of just doing whatever and having fun and being joyful. And so that's what wild orange or sweet orange brings to you is this kind of carefree, like cleansing the worries, you know, not adult stuff, really more child energy, um, an energy that is light and that is Oh, the, the sun, the sky got a little clearer. We got a little bit more sun, so nice. Um, it's this really light energy that we need when we feel a little heavy or a little unmotivated or a little depressed. And you don't need to use it necessarily when you feel this way. You can use it to prevent feeling this way. And so this is how I use my oils a lot is I use them you know, whenever I feel a certain type of energy that I want to counter, but also to prevent a type of energy to come in and um, be all too heavy on me. Bergamot, I was going to say lemon because lemon is also one of my favorites. Bergamot is a mood regulator. I, it's funny, here's my story with bergamot is that I loved Earl Grey tea. I discovered Earl Grey tea when I lived in England for a while. And I just fell in love with Earl Grey tea and I still am in love with it. But I didn't know why. I didn't know there was bergamot in it. And I just love the smell, I love the taste, I love all of it. This was a long time ago. And then when I went back to discovering essential oils, I realized, oh, it's bergamot. And that's why I'm attracted to it so much. Bergamot is a stabilizer. So whenever we feel on one, you know, we feel this a lot in our mood, like swinging from one end to the other, and we want that stability, this kind of containment. It's what bergamot does. It helps stabilize everything. It also, because it's a citrus, it also cleanses, you know, stagnant energy um, in the same way that like a lemon will do. It's so lovely. I love it. So bergamot and wild orange, I would definitely have around. Um, we all have mood swings or mood shifts, right? I, I would doubt very much that you don't experience that. And so I think it's beneficial for everybody. This coffee is so good. Okay, lavender. So this is a little bottle that I got at Wayward Wind's Farm, which is a little farm in Oregon. We went to pick lavender last summer and it was so fun. And they had essential oil that they distill themselves. So this is one tip that I would give you is you don't necessarily need to always go for the brands. Look around, what are some producers around you that might be um, distilling essential oil from the plants that they have. So here's the thing about lavender. A lot of people hate lavender, but that's because we know the kind of artificial fake scent of lavender. And when you smell a real lavender, it's just so, so lovely. It's a little bit camphorous too. So it has this, this element that is gonna help us breathe a little bit deeper. Lavender, it's considered um, an adaptogen, so meaning it's gonna work with whatever energy you have. If you have low energy, it's gonna help bring the energy up. If you have high strong energy, it's gonna bring the energy down. So it, it, you can't go wrong and it's not gonna hearten you. An adaptogen is never gonna bring you to a place that's harmful. Um, it is going to work to balance whatever is happening for you. So for some people, lavender is calming. For some people, it's actually a little bit stimulating. It's funny because it depends. And I think it's just so such a, a fun way to approach an oil with some respect, right? That it knows better than me what I need. Um, and it's so lovely to use at night. Not necessarily just when you go to bed, but when you come home from work, for example, or from, be from being out in the world and you need to kind of re-ground, reset, re-stabilize. 
um, regather, you know, you need to come back. Like I use the re a lot. You need to come back to yourself after just being out and about and you need to like just reintegrate almost into yourself. That's what I think about when I think of lavender. It's also such a beautiful oil for grief. I used it a lot two years ago when I um, lost my little, my little old pet, my little old friend. And I literally had it the first five days after she passed, I had it in my bag and I smelled it all day long. It's very soothing for grief and for, you know, pain and suffering. It holds us in that way. All right, another sip of coffee before I head on to the next oil. You know what I forgot? I have this cream. I always, hold on. <laughs> I always bring a spoon with my coffee because what I like to do is I like to spoon the cream and I forgot this time. I can't believe I did that. Hold on. I need rebalance. <laughs> Maybe my phone needs some lavender and some bergamot. Rebalance the phone. Okay. Um, geranium. Geranium. I rant about geranium. And I can't rant about geranium all day long. I know people who don't like it. Don't like the scent. What I read and heard said by teachers is that usually when you don't like the scent of something, it's a medicine that you need. It's the right medicine that um, that would be beneficial for you. And there's usually a little bit of resistance to that. So geranium, I feel instantly loved and cared for and soothed whenever I smell geranium. It is it has a little bit of a licorice element to it. It's a, it's a nice floral. I like it better than rose. It's a very unpopular opinion. It works for me better than rose at soothing and integrating and having that kind of motherly love. Um, I, it's, it's tricky to compare these oils to, you know, family members because we all have very different family dynamics and relations, and I know I sure do, but geranium feels like the most perfect mother, like the mother who has unconditional love, who, you know, you can't go wrong, is always going to be, like, the that is going to hug you and love you and care for you no matter what, is always there, non-judgmental, um but it's also gonna like mother you so that you can move forward. It, you're not staying in the self-pity or the kind of just um, sadness. It, it holds you so that you can then rise and move forward. I love geranium so much. This is staying on my, <laughs> on my coffee table. I put it, it's always in my diffuser blends. But um, I think I need it on my coffee table right now so I can smell it all the time. Vetiver is my the equivalent of my woods. It's a root. The oil is made from a root. And um, it's a grass. Vetiver is grass that grows in sandy soil. And what it does when it grows is that the roots help stabilize the soil and hold it together. Um, in like dunes and stuff. And so the plant does the same for us. It is a very particular smell, like for sure. It's very, so the bottle itself, when you, it's very kind of thick and viscous. Um, so it has a bit of a thickness to it, a viscosity to it. And also in the scent, it's kind of thick. It's not super light, you know, as opposed to like an orange or a bergamot or something like that. It just has, you know, almost like a, a honey consistency to it, all, and even to the scent. And if you're new to this and you're like, what the fuck is she talking about? 
<laughs> um, play around with it. I promise you, you will develop your own intuitive approach to this. You'll, you'll know, you'll, you'll start to feel the same. It's a little fresh, but it's a little, um, woodsy too, in a way. So it, it's really stabilizing. I have, so vetiver, the way I've used it was when I started intense therapy and I needed to earn a hearth, um, some pretty deep trauma and deep stuff. And it held me so well. And it helped unearth really deep, intense stuff. So in kind of personal therapy, introspection, um, healing work, vetiver is a good ally. You might want to pair it with something that is also going to be soothing and loving right? Like a floral or something like a chamomile, because doing that kind of work can be pretty intense. So vetiver is going to help kind of bring things to the surface. And then you want to make sure that you have a way to soothe and to, um, it's going to keep you grounded, but you also want to have the calming and the soothing element to it. So which is why it's really fun to use these oils in combination. You can use them on their own, but you can also kind of start to play around with how they work together and how you want them to work together simply by using them individually, or you can create a blend. And that's a whole other topic. All right, my lovely people, we're about at 15 minutes. This is all I have for today. I'm going to finish my coffee. Um, and then I will see you soon. I hope this is kind of fun and different. Let me know in the comments what your favorite oils are. I would love to know um, and what you want to learn. And I will see you soon. Bye, everybody.